Hello, good people. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Between Frets, a space where female musicians meet and discuss all things music. I am your host, Nicole Rose, like the true Southern Belle that I am. I'm sitting on my balcony with the fan overhead. I do have a nice tall glass of iced sweet peach tea next to me and some honey roasted peanuts on deck. Now, I don't know if the peanuts are necessarily Southern, but um, the sweet tea definitely is. Get you some. Make it extra sweet. You won't regret it. Trust me. I hope all of you are doing fantastic. Hope you're happy and healthy and enjoying your family and friends and just enjoying yourself more. Enjoying this life that we have more. As we all know, the beginning of 2020 was definitely some foolery, but hopefully and thankfully we made it through to the other side everything's opening back up and if it's not already open uh, it will be soon hopefully I'm just enjoying hearing the kids that play outside again and people are more friendly uh, for lack of a better I think they're friendlier than they were before maybe I just didn't pay attention Uh, people are saying good morning hi they're waving more and you know it just seems like everyone has come together like usually tragedy does bring us together hopefully we can all stay like this and doesn't go back fully to normal with people you know being you know peopling but uh (laughs) yeah just hopefully everyone is good where you are and I know during this quarantine I was a little bit more productive than I usually am because I do have a tendency to procrastinate and wait to the last minute but since I had a little bit extra time on my hands uh, as we all did, unless you were an essential worker. And I do thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the essential workers all over the world. You kept the world, earth, literally spinning off its axis. You helped, you kept, you kept us grounded. And I want to thank all of you all. And um, during the quarantine, I was writing more. I was playing guitar more. And I was prepping for the fall quarter coming up at university that I attend. It just seems like... Um, I was more focused and if you weren't doing the quarantine that just was time for you to relax and just you know have balance that works as well there's no right or wrong way just to hopefully you made it through happier and healthier and just more at peace and thankful um, to make it through it and um, I hope you all are sitting and relaxed and have your tea or your wine or your beer or your water or just lay back and ready to enjoy an amazing episode We are heading overseas again, y'all. We are headed to the Emerald City. We're headed to Sydney, Australia to talk to bassist Nikki Thomas. It's going to be an amazing episode. We'll see you in a minute. And we are back. We have bassist Nikki Thomas on the line with us all the way from Sydney, Australia. She is the bassist for Outlier, The Toxic Dolls. Her music style ranges from rock, pop to fusion. Anything you can name, she can definitely play it. She has shared the stage with the Doobie Brothers, Elvis Costello, Bot Skaggs, and the guitar guru himself, John Mayer. I want you all to welcome to Between Frets, Nikki Thomas. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And how are yourself? I am great. I'm great. I'm so awesome to have someone all the way from Australia. I was going to say down under, but I didn't want to sound cheesy. So oh, no, we're, we're, we're okay with that. We get it all the time. <laughs> awesome. So what is it? I know it's early over there. It's- yeah, it's, uh, it's just after nine o'clock. Oh, wow. Wow. So is it nice over there at this time of year? Um, it's currently autumn, so it's starting to really get really cold. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a hoodie on at the moment. Uh, the heat is cranked up, so yeah, a bit frosty oh. outside. Oh, wow. That's crazy. It's like 7 p.m. On, on the East Coast and it's 80 degrees outside still here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. So how are you dealing with all the craziness that's going on in the world right now? How, are you, how is everything your way? Um, yeah, it's it's... Yeah, yeah, my life has been turned upside down. I, I went from doing three gigs a weekend to six months of work loss. So, um, yeah, the last couple of months since it all hit, um, we've just been at home um, trying to keep busy because, you know, if you get too bored, it you just you might go a bit nutty. So, um, yeah, just trying to focus on doing stuff during the day and not 
being stuck in bed all the time because there's nothing to do. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the same here. Is, is this solely going back to normal there? Is everything opening up over there again? Is music venues uh, opening? Uh, we've had some restrictions slowly um, unfold. Um, so the state I'm in, New South Wales, um, all the states, they all, they're all lifting restrictions at their own accord. So um, the pubs and clubs are back open, but they're only allowing 10 customers in at one time, which is kind of not enough to sort of put live music back on. So I think we've got a couple more months before we might see a gig again. Oh, wow. Well, since uh, yeah. you have this downtime um, and you have, you know, time to actually focus more on music, how did you start in music? How did I start? Yeah, what was the earliest memory and what, what made you pick up the bass? Oh, well, my my father, he's a bass player as well. Um, I When I was a kid, uh, he, he played in bands and he still does today. He's 78 years old. Um, and I used to, used to go to his gigs as a kid oh, and I loved it. I just was totally mesmerised by my father playing on a stage. He, he plays a lot of rock and roll and, yeah, I always would beg to go, um, go watch him play at the pub. Um, yeah, they're probably probably the earliest I can think of. Um, but yeah, it, I come from a musical family, so it's all it's all in the family. That's awesome. Seventy eight and still rocking. I can do it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So you say you come from music family. Do you have any siblings that play as well or sing? Uh, yep, I've got. So I grew up with uh, an older brother and a younger sister. Uh, my, my older brother Cam, he um, he plays drums, plays guitar, and he sings a bit. He he doesn't gig or anything. He you know does it when in his own spare time. Um, but yeah, he got the the musical genes as well. My sister not so much, but um, yeah, it was more so. I, I took it on as a well. I've, I've now as of a couple of months ago, I've been doing it full time, playing just playing music. So yeah. Um, from doing these interviews, I notice a lot of bassists, if they don't play the drums, for some odd reason, they play the trumpet. Did either of those, are either of those true for you? Or did you play any other instruments? Oh, God. Um, funny you say that. My my brother, Cammy, plays drums. He he did end up playing trumpet or trombone, <laughs> one of those. Um, yeah, well, uh, it wasn't the first. Bass wasn't the first thing I picked up. Um, uh, it was actually piano. Okay. Another early memory I remember, my, my dad dabbles in a bit of piano and we had a keyboard at home and he um, taught me and the siblings um, the song Heart and Soul, how to play that. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, so like he would show us how to play the bass line, then he'd show us how to play the melody and we'd all take turns at either doing the bass and melody and playing it together. So that was, that was kind of cool. It's the first song I learned. <laughs> Besides piano, like I, I did a few lessons when I was about six. Um, over the years, I just dabbled in it. I'm no, I'm no little Richard, but <laughs> I, I can I can play it fairly well. Um, when I was about twelve, my parents asked me if I wanted to learn clarinet, and I said, "Yeah, okay, I'll give it a go." And I did that for a couple of years. And me and my siblings we used to go to church growing up, the Salvation Army, and. Um, I was encouraged to play in the my clarinet in the brass band, oh, wow. <laughs> which yeah, which doesn't make sense, but it, <laughs> it, it was cool. But it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah. See, I know, I, I know, I started off playing the clarinet, clarinet, so I, I do understand a little bit about that one for sure. Yep. Um, yep. So I haven't. I haven't touched it in about 10 years. I've, I've lost the lip for it, so. Yeah, once the embouchure is gone, it's just a wrap. <laughs> That's it. Exactly right. It's a wrap. But you can always pick it back up if you like. It's never too late. I think it's in the closet somewhere. In my cupboard, stashed away, so. <laughs> so you say you took lessons younger. Did you take any for the bass, or did you just learn from your dad or watching videos or just bat ear? Um, so with bass, I actually didn't pick that up till I was about 15. I decided, I said to my dad, I said, dad, you know what? I, I want to learn to play bass like you. Cause I just, he's my idol. He's number one idol. Um, so he said, okay. And he bought me a bass guitar for Chris, the next Christmas. And it came with like a, a learning bass book. I think I did about the first 10 lessons in there. 
and dad had already given me a basic understanding of popular bass lines that you're playing rock and roll and how to yeah you know different kind of licks and stuff so I had a little bit of knowledge over that and after the 10th lesson I just put it down and since then I've just self-taught oh wow yeah so did it um come easy to you or do you feel there was determination to learn to play yeah I had a lot of determination and um uh, after I you know about a couple of months or so into it I was okay and then I actually got to join the stage band at the church and give it a go so that gave me a bit of a feel to you know um, perform with a group and to a crowd and I did that for quite a few years so yeah that's where it all really began. So do you sing as well? A lot of bass players don't sing and play as well. They say they find it difficult. Do you do that? Do you sing as well? Yeah I I do sing. I, um, I never really when growing up, I never really wanted to sing. I, I, I kind of hated it. My, <laughs> my mother would force me to try and sing the hymns in church. I just hate it. <laughs> um, but probably the last five, six years, I kind of, since dabbling in bass, um, I really regretted not taking up lessons. So I started taking lessons. and um, But, yeah, to this day when I play an outlier, I, um, I do sing quite a few songs. And it is difficult at first, but just practice, practice, practice. Well, to your credit, the hymns in church are kind of boring, so I can't really blame you for, <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah, you can feel my pain. <laughs> for, sure. for sure. Well, that's awesome. Do you remember your first bass, what it was? Do you still have um, it? Yeah, I just... No, I don't. My um, So my dad bought me a... It was just like a... The local music shop, music shop had um, like bass packs, so they were... It was a Fender Squire. Yeah, Fender Jazz Squire, I believe. Nice washburn colour. Yeah, I ha- I've, I had that up until last year, I think. So about 10 years I had it. Oh, awesome. From your background, it seems like since your dad was in a rock band and different bands and still plays, um, your style now, do you consider yourself having a style or are you more eclectic? You play some of everything. Um, well, I play a bit of everything. Um, I, I play covers. So in the I've, I've learned over the last couple of years since I've been heavily gigging that um, when you play in covers bands or you want to, you know, get your name out there and be able to play. You've got to know, a, you know, a fair bit of range, um, different genres, different styles of music, different songs, different kinds of bands. Um, but, but mostly uh, in Outlier, we play a lot of rock and pop, stuff that people want to hear in the pubs and clubs. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably say for me personally, I, I'm, a, I'm a rock chick at heart. So my style, I'd say, would be rock. Okay. Um, yeah, rock through and through. As a bassist, do you did you listen to a lot of basses, or was it more any, anything just like sort of caught your ear? You tried to play. Um, uh, how would I say this? Oh, growing up, I thanks to my parents and having older siblings, you know, they whilst I'm learning instruments, they were introducing me to music that they grew up with. So my father, being seventy eight, he grew me up on Elvis and. You know, everybody knows who Elvis Presley is and he's the king of rock and roll. Um, um, other bass players, I guess, over the years, I, I took a liking to... I loved the Beatles, so I, I love Paul McCartney and I love his style. But, you know, I, I like a lot of... I like, I like all kinds of music thanks to being brought up and listening to all sorts of stuff. I didn't really have... Like, I know of um, Victor Wooten mm-hmm. and... And, and Jaco, uh, I think yes, Jaco Pistorius. Um, yes, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I, I saw more focused on just like different bass players and different famous bands, not just for their bass playing, but their persona mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, like I'm a massive fan of Kiss. I absolutely love Gene Simmons. Sweet. Um, I love his. I love his style. I love how he performs on stage. His attitude. And just the fact that he's a businessman and Kiss are one of the biggest bands in the world. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I can't really think of any at the top of my head. Oh, well, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. Put you on a spot there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so as I mentioned, you're in the group Outlier and you're in the group Toxic Dolls. Uh, which which yep. came first? And they're, they're kind of different kinds of genres of music for both bands. And the Toxic Dolls is all female band. Yes, that's correct. Um, Toxic Dolls came first. Um, it's only been in the last, it's probably about the last 12 months. So 
I actually I, I live out of Sydney. Um, I actually live a little quite far away from Sydney, but I was in Sydney at the time and I just left a band and I thought, oh, I need to play um, or I'm going to go crazy. So Toxic Dolls were looking for a bass player and I messaged the messaged them and said, I'm interested. And they just gave me the job. I just said, yep, we've seen your Facebook profile. Here's your set of songs and here's your first Here's your oh, first that's gig. The best. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, so that was really cool. Um, yeah, is it is a little bit different to Outlier. We we have a like a, a an image to go with it. We all dress up in corsets. Um, over the over the last twelve months since I've been with them, I've taken I've made my own style. I've got a purple corset to go with my purple bass guitar that I have. And yeah, we we play a lot of rock covers. It's something that people have, haven't really seen, so it's it's really cool to do. Nice. Um, and it's all girls too, which is really rare. Oh, is it? Especially in the... Yeah, over here, it's it's pretty rare to see a full female band. Um, so it's it's a bunch of fun. It's so cool. Okay. Well, that's great. I don't know, I don't know why. I didn't know. I, I thought you had a, a male uh, guitarist in it for some reason. Okay. That is great. Um, in... Yeah, in Toxic Dolls, yeah, it's all females, which is cool. Um, in Outlier, we've got we've got Jay, our guitarist, and we've got Rosie, our drummer. Yeah, I, I saw Rosie. I was like, that's dope. But uh, I like to see female drummers <laughs> as well. So, <laughs> yeah, she's a um, she's a tight she's a tight drummer. She's very cool for sure. So you all travel um, through Australia. Do you do any like out of the country gigs as well with the band, or do, have you done any touring? Um, so I've, I've only been with Dolls for 12 months. They play a lot around the Sydney region. Um, Sydney's the biggest country, uh, biggest city, sorry, in mm-hmm. Australia. So we'll play out, play out west, we'll play north, we'll play inner east. We might go down a couple of hours down south to a town called Wollongong. We'll play around there. They might go north, a couple of hours north of Sydney to a place called Newcastle. Um, but that's about it, really. There, we did have plans on the cards to go a little bit regional mm-hmm. and possibly down to Melbourne in Victoria. But um, since the coronavirus hit, obviously, it's all been put to a halt, all our plans. Yeah, for sure. So I've seen a lot of people, since they can't gig or do anything now, the band still get together and maybe via Skype or Zoom and still post. Do you all, Have you all thought about doing that? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I've been doing a bit of work with Outlier the last month. I was just in Sydney last week to do a video clip with Jay and Rosie um, and it got released yesterday on Facebook. We just did a cover of, we did uh, Led Zeppelin's Rock and Roll and we put a video clip together. Um, So, yeah, we've we've been... We've been doing a bit of thing in the works, um, you know, in the the quiet, um, which has been good for us because we've been we've really been missing gigging and hanging out and seeing each other and just gives it feels like there's a bit of normality there as well. So, and with Toxic Dolls, I've had one rehearsal with them in the last couple of months, um, and that was good to just you know, blow away the cobwebs and get into a rehearsal studio and rock out with each other again and just hang out really it's yeah since you've had some downtime have you worked on any original music or do you want to do any original music um it's original music i i haven't really dabbled in um jay wants to jay has done originals with outlier before i joined the band um and he wants to do more so there'll something will come up in the next couple of months where we'll put our heads together and start writing so that that'll be a cool thing, cool path to go down. I've I've never really dabbled in originals music, um, but yeah, stay tuned, I guess. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I'm definitely gonna look forward to that. And as I mentioned, you share the stage with you know some very great uh, musicians. How did it come about that you were on stage with the Doobie Brothers, which I love, and Mayer and Elvis Costello and all that? How did those gigs come about? Oh, so I, that was, so that was probably about, I think it was about six years ago. Um, I'd, I'd finished school by that stage. I was working full time. Um, I dabbled in bass, but at that, at that stage, I didn't really know of um, get where I am today in the industry. So, you know, I, back then I had 
the idea of, oh, you know, people just do it for fun in pubs and clubs. I didn't realise people actually got paid for it, you know, um, and that people make a living out of just playing music. So I went down to a local pub with a nephew of mine who plays guitar and he introduced me to a local artist named Joel Sulman and he had just released an, a blues EP um, and he, was, he got offered to play at the Daniloquin Blues and Roots Festival which happens every year in a town called Daniloquin, which is about from Sydney. It's probably about six hours southwest. Um, so anyway, my nephew said, oh, auntie here, she plays bass. And Joel said, no worries, come up, have a jam. So I did and just I think the next day he messaged me and said, hey, do you want to play bass for me at a, at a big, big festival? Uh, I jumped on it straight away. Went, yeah, no worries. <laughs> so... Yeah, we practiced for weeks and weeks, all of his songs, one rehearsal a week. And then the week before it happened, that was, we played in, in that, back in that same pub. It was a proper gig. That was probably my first proper gig was that. We went up to Daniloquin for it and it was just, it was insane. <laughs> <laughs> Absol- absolutely insane. Like these days when I get up on stage, I, you know, I, it's, um, it's like a second home to me being on stage. I'm not scared of a crowd. I'm not. I don't get fear or nervous oh, wow. anymore. Um, past, I'm past that stage because I've just done it so much. It's just like a second nature. But back then, it, it being pretty much my second gig ever, I think I played to a crowd of about eight. On 000. your second gig? Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just. Ex- it was so daunting. I just couldn't get over it. Um, yeah, I remember being backstage and there being separate rooms and stuff. You know, have the Doobie Brothers on one door. and um, But John Mayer didn't come till he was the last act of the night. So he actually got flown in by helicopter about half an hour before he went on just because of his mm-hmm. status um, being so high. I didn't actually, we were one of the first ones to go on. I didn't hang around for too long. I was so tired. I went mm-hmm. home. I remember, I, get, I remember getting home and... The boys in the band sent me a picture. They all got to meet John. And I was like, you are kidding me. I should have stayed. Far out. So, yes, that's how I, that's how I got on the bill. And I, I look back at that and I go, far out. Like, I, I didn't really understand too much about, you know, Elvis Costello and the Doobie Brothers. But I look back and go, holy crap. It's amazing. They news. are. They're so big. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> I couldn't believe it. I still can't. That is that. awesome. I also read it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you played at a blues festival as well. Um, so yeah, that, that was, that blues was the blues festival. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. totally different vibe from the rock kind of feel. Mm. Did you? I know you said it was just a gig. You were nervous. Were you, did you feel comfortable with the style of music? Um, yeah. Well, um, a lot of Joel's stuff. It was. It was very bluesy. Um, but a lot of it was based around, you know, twelve bar blues, so okay. simple three chords. Um, and just over the rehearsals, I kind of, you know, learning it, I would just put my own style to it, um, make it sound a little bit more rock. So, and he 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 was fine with that. It sounded great. I think I think we even did like a rock and roll song in the set, and um, they made me do a bass solo. I just just did a standard twelve bar blues bass lick into it um i couldn't look at the crowd it was so wow. so nerve-wracking for your second gig they threw everything at you <laughs> get a solo go out there you got it <laughs> yeah basically so yeah <laughs> that's the that's the way to get rid of stage fright for sure wow yep so yep. what do you do on your downtime where you does, doesn't involve music um well i i live at home with my partner he he's also a musician um we well, what do I do? <laughs> Lie in bed all day, or oh, I've been trying to, like I said earlier, I've been trying to stay busy. I think that's really important in mm-hmm. times like this. So I wake up and remind myself, okay, I've got to get up and do something today. So whether it be cleaning or going for a walk, um, sometimes me and my partner will get out the karaoke and have a have a little duet sing together, just random songs that pop that's up on YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah. If I, I'll, you know, I'll pull out the bass and have a little dabble on it or I'll practice my singing, do some singing warm-ups and I've started taking more lessons again recently. Not much really. Been doing a little bit of babysitting, but, yeah, it's kind of all just a, 
a waiting game yeah. at the moment. <clears throat> but I'm I'm trying not to. It's it's affected everyone's mental health. Just our lives being turned upside sure. down. So, thought to myself, I don't want to slip into a a dark place because of what's happened. So I'm going to stay positive, just do stuff, and kind of see it as a blessing to just take a mm-hmm. big rest and focus on things that I want to work on, so that I can improve before I get back out there. So try and reinvent myself a little bit or improve myself to what I was before the lockdown yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hope everything opens back up because it's opened up slowly but surely everywhere. So hopefully things get back to normal soon for everyone. Yep. Yeah, I hope so too. Could you give us a rig rundown? Because I know you have a few endorsements. Uh, could you give us a rig rundown of all the, you know, what you use on a normal basis, on a regular basis, I should say? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I've got a um so I've got a mark base cab. It's a it's the ninja series, two by twelve, I've got one. And I've got the matching ninja head to go with it. Um so that that's the rig I've got. Before that I had a had a really fat PV. It was so big it, and it was so it was so big, it was just being fat and it was it packed a punch. Um but yeah, since I, I got a endorsement with Mark Bass and um, Ernie Ball Strings about September last year. And with that endorsement, I, I got the cab, the head, and they gave me about six sets worth of bass strings, which was, which was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, that's my go-to. It's, it's, it's an awesome little rig for, you know, the shows, the, con- the gigs that I do and stuff. Um, it's not too heavy either. I can carry it in two hands and walk in and, you know, every second bloke sitting down goes, oh, you're right, you need a hand. <laughs> You want me to carry that for you? No, I've got it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so how did the endorsements come about? Um, oh, well, it was um, – I just started playing with Jay a lot and he was looking for – his bass player had um, that was in Outlier before me, she <coughs> had moved away and she also fell pregnant so she left the band. And so Jay was looking – he actually sent out a, a feeler to every bass player he knew, including myself, and said, I've got a bunch of gigs – feel free to put your hand up if you want any of them. I just responded to him and said, oh, you know what, I, I want them all. I want to be in your band. I just want to be a bass player, please. Um, I, and I worked hard to prove myself that I could do it, play in the band, learn the songs, make sure I was tight and do my bit. And um, I think he really, he really, what's the word? Um, I don't know. He saw you. that I was dedicated. And I think he really, yeah, he appreciated that and, he went to Ernie Ball HQ and gave them a bio on me and they said, yep, we, we want to sponsor her, we want to endorse her. And um, with the help of him and them, they got me the cab and the head and, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a day that I never saw coming. Never did I think I'd, I'd be endorsed by someone like Ernie yeah, Ball Strings sounds- like, or Mark Bass. Um, so, yeah, it was just – it was a spin out. It was out of this world when I got that. And So that's the purple yeah. base? Uh, no, so I don't have, I don't have a Mark base base. I've just got cab, the, yeah, yeah. I've got a cab, yeah, with the head and some yeah. Ernie Ball strings. Um, the purple okay. base I have, that's a Fender. That's the Adam, it's the Adam Clayton signature. So the base blow for you too. It just caught my eye one day. You know, it, it, we're all girls. <laughs> it's purple and it's sparkly, and I just was like, yeah, I need to have that. So that's. That's probably the that's the main bass that I use when performing. Otherwise, I've got a I've got a jazz bass yeah, as well. I had to mention the purple bass. I saw it on your IG. I was like, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, it gets a lot of gets a lot of attention. It's a, it's a great bass guitar. I, I've only had it for eight months, I think. Um, I had the jazz for a couple of years, and I really lo- I love the tone of jazz. Uh, my dad plays with the jazz, um, and then I thought to myself, you know, what? I really want to I want a precision. Just so I just have that different tone and, you know, you can have fun having the two. Um, yeah, that was the one I went with. So, That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so we have uh, listeners of all ages listening, female musicians, male musicians as well. Uh, what advice for you would you give them beginning yeah. or trying to break into music or what what advice would you give them? Uh, I, I suppose there's, there's so much I've learnt. Um I've only been heavily gigging for about two and a half years now and I've learnt so much over that two and a half years. Um, I've been very fortunate enough with 
Jay and Outlier, we rub shoulders with some session artists who play with bigger Australian artists. And I suppose, and I've, I've met some and I've spoken to some and, and I've asked them the same thing. Like these people that I play with, they play with big artists. Like, I don't know if you've heard of them, Rose Tattoo, ACDC. Okay. One thing I do take on that I've, has stuck to me that I've learned is uh, have the right attitude, I guess. Um, yeah, have the right attitude. Learn your stuff. Make sure you learn your stuff. And music isn't about looking good and being famous and trying to be known by everyone. It's actually everyone is just everyone that I've come across that are on a higher level of me when it comes to status. Um, it's just about having fun getting together with your mates and doing what you love. If you make it any more than that, you, it, you won't get far, I guess. So. For sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll break it down. I'll break it down into three steps. So one, learn your stuff. Two, have the right attitude. Don't be, don't be, um, what's Say whatever word? you want to say is fine. It's... <laughs> I don't know. If... <laughs> don't For be, sure. don't be an asshole, I guess. Um, and you know, um, and just have fun, have fun. And that's, yeah, that's what I stick by. Perfectly put. So. That it definitely gets you far, for sure. How can everyone reach you? Yeah. Any websites, uh, social media? Tell people where to follow you. Okay, well, I've got a Facebook. Um, I'm only up to 2,000 friends, so I can still have another 3,000. <laughs> so you can follow me on J Perino Music on Facebook or the Out- Outlier page. You can also follow me on to- the Toxic Dolls page. And I also have an Instagram, which is Nikki Thomas underscore music. Um, yeah, that's they're my socials awesome, there awesome. for you. Awesome. Well, I do very much appreciate you coming on today. You had I enjoyed the conversation, and I really love your accent. I have to say that. And, uh, <laughs> and I hope <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. And I hope you stay safe out there, happy, healthy. I hope everything gets back to normal sooner than later for you all. And again, just thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. No worries. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, Good to do something (laughs) other than cleaning today. So safe wishes to you as well over there. I know America's been hit a bit hard with the coronavirus. So thank you so much. And this is LaCole Rose. Want to thank you for listening. You catch us next time on Between Frets. Later. Hey, Riff Girl, what you got? If you want to learn more about this lick, hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at Fret Sisters or email us at fretsistersmusic at gmail.com. Peace and love. <laughs>